Hello, everyone. Welcome to How to Survive the Holiday Season. Thank you so much for spending your evening, or at least a small portion of your evening with me. For those of you who I don't know, I'm Dr. Shahana. I'm a doctor, a family physician, a speaker, and most importantly, a mother of three little rambunctious boys. Today's talk is really so important for this upcoming holiday season. I feel like December has once again crept up on us. And before we know it, we're in the midst of the full holiday swing. Now, my son recently came back from his preschool class and shared a really interesting story with me. He was saying, mommy, we had, we had a snowball fight at school. And at first I thought, oh, that's, that's great. That's interesting. So automatically I said, well, did you get hit with a lot of snowballs? And he said, no, no, mommy, we were all blindfolded. So suddenly I had this image of a bunch of four-year-olds and three-year-olds for that matter, blindfolded, all throwing snowballs at each other and doing the best they can could to hit each other. And this image for whatever reason just stuck with me because it kind of feels like what the holiday season can feel like. Like you're throwing out all of this stuff, hoping that it's going to land. It's going to be this picturesque holiday season. Now, this talk, I wanna promise you something. I wanna promise that I'm gonna to stick to the 30 minutes or just slightly above that. I'm gonna promise you that whatever we cover today, hopefully is going to be thought provoking for you. And most important, I want whatever we discuss today to have key takeaway messages. So it's not just comfort that I'm giving you. It's not just inspiration that I'm giving you, but it's actually something tangible that both you and I, for that matter, can work on and take into this holiday season. Now I spoke before of what does that picturesque holiday card look like? And when I saw this image, I thought, yes, you know, the mom decorating this beautiful Christmas tree and the dad raising the little girl to put the star on top. And you can almost hear the, the Christmas carols playing in the background and the smell of the freshly baked cookies. And it's supposed to be the most wonderful time of the year. And if we ever forget that, anytime we enter any department store, the Christmas carols playing overhead will certainly remind us that it, oh, but by the way, it is the most wonderful time of the year. So why then does it feel like this? Why do, then does it feel like we're carrying this weight of, you know, families, friends, our health, our work, our relationships, or lack thereof, of money, of perhaps dealing with people in our family with alcohol issues, grief, loss, sickness, accidents, it seems like the list goes on. And as a physician, I know more and more somebody will come to me with back pain or abdominal pain. But I would say 75% of the time, if I dig a little deeper, I'm going to find that a key influencer to their symptoms is found on this list. It's a marriage that's struggling. It's kids who have moved out and gone astray. It's dealing with elderly parents with dementia. It's upcoming treatments for a disease that they didn't see coming. It's all of these things. So although it's supposed to look like the most wonderful time of the year, this, this can sometimes be our reality. So how then do we reconcile this? So I think the better title to this, because of course we're gonna say, things like how to get unstressed this holiday season, because those are sexy, attractive titles. I think the better title to all of this is how to expect, how to expect some stress this holiday season, because whenever you have this dichotomy of expectations being really high and nothing more high than it's the best time of the entire year, we know that somewhere along the way, something, your kids, your spouse, your family, the turkey dinner, something might fall short. So isn't it better to go into the holiday season with the expectation that
that there might be some hiccups and hurdles along the way. So this is my little acronym that I've created, hence the crossing out, that's the X and Xmas. And these are the three quick topics we're going to cover to get you through the holiday season. And just a, a word is that I'm actually using this myself just because I design this stuff, just because I think about this stuff. It actually goes to show you how much I and many of us need constant reminders for this kind of these kind of subjects, I should say. So the first thing we're going to cover is measure, then anticipate and then story. Let's dive in. Measure. I was at the dollar store yesterday, and this is a true story, with my son picking up a various number of art supplies. And we always go in just wanting one thing and leave with a $100 bill. It seems to be the consistent nature of these things. So I'm in the checkout line, and the cashier is lovely and offering to box up my glass vases for me and do all of these things. And I look at her and we just have this little conversation, you know, how is your Christmas going? How are the holidays that are soon approaching? And I asked her the same question and she looked at me and she said, well, it's a bit of a long story. She said that my mom passed away earlier in January of this year. We didn't see it coming. She was otherwise quite healthy, but she had a fall that ended up in a number of complications. So I went and I lived with my mom and I, let, and I lived with my mom and my dad and I wanted to be there for my dad, so I was. So this was only supposed to be a temporary move. But then in September, my husband passed away completely unexpectedly. She said, I found him, I found him in the bathroom. He had no signs of a cardiac history and he died from a heart attack. So. She just looked at me and said, Christmas is going to be a little bit different this year. She didn't say bad. She didn't say sad. She just said different. And it really showed me like there's nothing like this example to show you that she started off 2021 with four or at least three very close family members, her mom, her husband, and her dad. She is now ending 2021 with just her dad completely unexpectedly. But her words to me were, she looked at me and said, actually, I'm really strong. And I am so lucky to have my dad. So that ray of light that you see in the picture is where she decided to focus on. She measured her contentment, her satisfaction, her expectation, with what was remaining, her dad. She focused her energy on the fact that I'm gonna make this the best Christmas for my dad. She could have easily, and she would not have been in the wrong to say, this is gonna be an awful Christmas. I'm grieving the loss of two people. But instead, she measured that contentment based on who was remaining in her life. And for me, it comes down to this, what stands between an event and your reality is simply what we choose to measure or simply what you choose to focus on. And I think of that perception almost like saran wrap or that cling wrap. If you think about how many times you've clinged wrapped something in your, in, your, in your kitchen, you'll notice that, of course, there's the food and then there's a cling wrap and then there's the dish that you actually put put away in the fridge. Well, that cling wrap is your perception. It's your perception of what am I going to focus on? And you can see this list is very heavily focused on what a mom of young toddlers might be focusing on. Am I going to focus on the messes and the laundry and the fights and the tantrums and the exhaustion and the pain and the overwhelm and all of it? That is my cling wrap. That is my perception. Or Am I like that? Am, am I going to be like that inspirational cashier and choose to not poke holes in that saran wrap or cling wrap, but actually measure my contentment, measure my satisfaction on something that I can control? So this is your homework. This is one thing, even if you have a pen and paper next to you, I really just take a couple seconds and do this exercise. 
what feeling, how do you want to show up this holiday season? I'm not asking for you to be happy 24-7 throughout the holiday season. That's not what this is about. But if you could cultivate one feeling, what feeling would that be? And I'll, I'll be personal here. I want to be more present with my kids. So I want to cultivate presence. So where have I felt this before and when have I felt this before? The honest answer is if my needs are taken care of and they're simple, if I've showered, if I've eaten, you know, then I can be more present with my kids. How else are you going to show up this holiday season? And how are you going to take care of yourself so that anything, because there's going to be a lot of things that you could choose to focus on, that you could choose to measure. But just like that example, what are you going to choose to measure? And it can be an activity. It can be an activity that takes your breath away. It can be an activity where time stands still for you. Or it can be a feeling. And it's very similar to that whole idea of don't think of a purple elephant. You probably just thought of a purple elephant. But if I tell you, I want you to really focus on feeling content, feeling more present, feeling as if time is standing still, feeling more in the moment. And do that before you enter the holiday rush. You are going to look out. You're going to tease apart those moments where you're like, yes, I recognize this. And therefore, you can measure it. So we've covered measure. The next one is anticipation. I had to put this in because I just love this. Anticipation. One of my patients, I work with a lot of youth. One of my patients came to me and said, you know, I, I'm finding it really difficult to nourish myself. And when we dug a little bit deeper into that, it was because she was having severe, severe social anxiety so severe that it would take her almost two hours to grocery shop because as she would go down the line of the aisles, she'd have to look through the aisles, make sure no one was there, run, grab her thing, and then come back out. And you can imagine there's usually other people in a grocery store. So her grocery shopping experience for even a couple of items would take hours on end just to avoid being close to anybody. And this struck me as such a, you know, a difficult example of social anxiety and how much social anxiety can affect somebody's day-to-day -day life. But I asked her something. I said, have you ever tried this? Have you ever tried that the next time you go to the grocery store, you tell yourself, you know what? I know there are going to be people there. So when you go down that aisle, I want you to don't hope that there's nobody there actually anticipate, yes, I bet you there's somebody going to be there. I bet you there's going to be five people down that aisle. I'm not telling her that it's going to reduce the anxiety. I'm just telling her that the anticipation of it can take the sting away. Because the simple fact is that anxiety breathes in the fertile soil of silence. And I've said this a number of times, and I really use this example for myself. When I struggle currently with postpartum anxiety and or OCD, it was a thousand times worse when I kept it to myself. It was a million times worse when I felt that there was too much shame and stigma to even utter those words out loud. So sometimes just the anticipation of what's going to cause you that hiccup will take half the sting away. So this is your homework. What is one thing you might find hard as you enter this holiday season? What is something that you've struggled with previously during other holiday seasons? And what's something that could just completely catch you off guard? I want you to look me in the eye, if I could see you right now, um, and tell me how long you've spent planning your holiday meal, or the gifts you have to give, or all of the stuff that comes along with the holidays. But I bet you none of us, including myself, has given any thought or any planning to things that you might find hard or things that might just trip you up a little bit. Even if you spent two minutes on this, if it does trip you up, if you've anticipated, suddenly that stumble isn't going to feel so rough. 
So remind me, you, I'm going to remind you guys, we talked about measuring. What are you going to focus on? Anticipation, thinking ahead of where the hurdles or stumbling blocks could be, just like that late young gal who was in the shopping aisle. And the last one I want to share with you is my personal favorite story. And I'm going to, I'm going to get personal here because this is something that I do every single holiday season. And what we often have to do is travel. We have to get on a plane with our three littles. And I, for whatever reason, am typically involved in packing up everything for the three kids. Now, this is a big hiccup point for me. I often find myself telling myself the same story in my head. Why do I have to be the one packing up everything? What if I forget something? What if they don't have what they need? Why does it always fall on my shoulders? This is personal to me. But I think if you just think for even 10 seconds, you probably can think of that story that you love to hit play on every single holiday season. And it can, once again, it goes back to what is that thing that has caused you to trip and stumble previous holiday seasons? And for me, the, even the anticipating of needing to pack causes me a certain degree of anxiety, but it's the story that I'm telling myself. It's the story that I'm selling myself that makes it sting that much more. So the key piece here is in your story, within the pages of your story, you will find your significance. And what do I mean by that? If I just try to dive in a little bit deeper to the phrase, what if I forget something? What if I'm missing something? If I ask myself the question, what does that say about you? What does that say about me? If I ask myself that same question seven times, the ultimate answer for me personally would be people wouldn't think I'm a good mom. Period, underlined, full stop. That is the core. That is where my significance or my lack thereof lies. So you can tell yourself the same story on repeat over and over and over again. And even just recognizing that you do have a story in your head and that you do have a repeating story in your head is a great thing. Many people don't even realize that that's going on. So if you're there, amazing. But if you can take it one step further and keep pushing on that button and going, why does that sting so much? Why does that feel like these hundred paper cuts that I just can't get rid of? Using the phrase, what would that say about me? Allows you to get to the depth of your story and what you are so craving significance for. Is it to be the best mom, the best dad, the best boss, the best employee? the best cook, the best whatever. Many times using this phrase can get you there. If you haven't realized what that story is that you happen to tell yourself, fill in the blanks of these phrases. During this holiday, I always have to, or I never get to, I never get any time for myself. I never get to relax. I never fill in the blank. I never get the present I want, whatever the case happens to be. Or I should be. I should be doing this. I should have achieved this. These three, the ends of these three sentences will start to unravel the story that you often don't even recognize is playing within your head. So this is the acronym that I want you to think about or follow at, before we even enter the depths of this holiday season. Where are you going to put your focus? Before we even start, what feeling do you want to conjure up? What memory? Think about the memory and then experience the memory. Picture it. Visualize it. Anticipate the hiccups that might catch you off guard. For me, it might be traveling alone with my three little ones on a plane, which will be the first time for me. I'm anticipating a lot of hiccups there. So that's going to be a personal one that I have to work through. 
And what is the story that I keep selling to myself, telling to myself? And where can we start to poke holes in that story? This is all of that homework summarized. What will you focus on? What do you choose to measure? Where will you stumble? Because we all will stumble. And what is that story you are going to try to sell yourself? I promised you that it was going to be timely. So yes, I didn't go over the half an hour mark. But I do want to remind you, if you can, please connect with me on my website. Instagram is the you know, the portal that I seem to go to most often to post content. But if you subscribe to my email list, you'll find a free quiz there, the Optimal Health Pyramid quiz. Feel free to share far and wide because we all, including myself, can benefit from this kind of dialogue. For those of you who want a printout or a little downloadable of the things we need to do this holiday season, this, this checklist right here, feel free to send me an email at info, just info at drshahana.com, info at drshahana.com, and I'll be happy to give you that downloadable of what you need to do this holiday season. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me. I love being able to have a little bit of your evening. This webinar is being recorded and we will share it as well for any of those who have missed it. Thanks everyone.